In this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. When paranormal investigator Mary Vogel discovers a satanic sanctuary, she unleashes the fury of a vengeful spirit. Soon she's locked in a struggle against an entity seeking to conquer her mind and body. And the battle turns physical. The price of victory may be her life. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. On every continent and in every country, the supernatural weaves itself into the fabric of our very reality. In the complexity of modern existence, invisible forces often go unnoticed by all except paranormal investigators. Sometimes, however, entities threaten innocent people. When they do, paranormal investigators rely on years of study, an innate courage, and in many cases, their piety, to defend the defenseless against entities hell-bent on destruction. In the fall of 2000, paranormal investigator Mary Vogel leads her team into the Virginia countryside. What are we doing here? We are investigating a barn I got a call about. A week before, a general contractor had been renovating the building. He was unable to complete his job because of the supernatural activity that was going on there. To protect her identity, Mary appears under the condition of anonymity. At one point in time, the circular saw had gone on, and it wasn't even plugged in. <laughs> Jane Reeves is new to paranormal research. She and Mary have already forged a close friendship. From the first time we met, it was almost like we had known each other forever. Why don't you take some temperature gauges? I'm gonna check out the loft. You guys stay down here, okay? I decided it was just best for me to go by myself. I didn't want anybody to fall through any holes or whatnot. Using a microcassette recorder, Mary hopes to capture an EVP, or electronic voice phenomena, of any presence in the loft. Candle wax, a pentagram. That basically told me that there was satanic rituals there.
very suddenly, I had a stabbing pain in my stomach, as if I was violently ill. Get out! Mary, what's the equipment? Get out! There was something that definitely didn't want us there. Let's go. That frightened me, and I became frightened for my team and their safety. Later that night, Yeah, you know I have Mary's 13-year-old son, Josh, has never been comfortable with his mom investigating the supernatural. Well, you know what? Then I will do it when you are not here. How's that? Okay. Well, good. Oh. Mary and Mike have been dating for several years and are engaged to be married. I missed you last weekend. I missed you, too. I even brought you something back from the country. Oh, really? Hey, mm -hmm. you didn't bring me back anything. Well, what about a kiss? <laughs> no way. Like Josh, Mike is wary of the supernatural. He had some skepticism when it came to paranormal oh, research in general. At the same time, he was my biggest support system. Lie down for me real quick. During the week, Mary works as a physical therapist with her own private practice. All right, can you lift the leg for me to 90 degree? Good. Okay, stop. Okay, all right. Do it one more time. A few days later, Mary continues listening to the barn recording with her friend Jane. I haven't heard anything. See if you can hear anything. Okay. Anything like that had ever happened to me. It just scared me to death. It wasn't a human voice. It felt like something evil. Mary calls her longtime mentor. John Zaffis speaking. Based in Connecticut, Zaffis has investigated the supernatural for more than three decades in the uh, paranormal field, it's very important to establish connections with people. Mary and I have established a very good working relationship plus a friendship. Listen, uh, we just heard a really, a really disturbing uh, EVP, and uh, we wanted your opinion. Yeah, of course, I'm happy to help. The voice on the EVP just said, uh, your guide can't help you now. Listen, satanic worshipers, uh, they often evoke negative spirits. It's a means to protect their sight. Satan yeah. worshiping. We were That's that. very, very hardcore. Right, listen. When you're a sensitive individual like Mary, that can prove to be extremely, extremely dangerous. Yeah, what, what do we do? All right, listen. Go to mass, go to confession. I have recommended that she protect herself just in case something might have gravitated towards her. John advised us to drop that case. It wasn't worth any danger to myself or my investigators. That night, 
Mary takes precautions to protect her house and loved ones. In every room, I made sure that there was a crucifix. She also wears Blessed Saint medallions. Like many Catholics, Mary believes these medallions offer divine protection. I just wanted to feel surrounded by a holy type of protection, repulsive to anything evil. Hello? Hey, sis. Yeah, listen. Mary's sister, Allison, attends grad school in California where she's studying to become a psychotherapist. Despite living 3,000 miles apart, they talk regularly. Do you remember that barn case I was telling you about? Oh, yeah, sure, I remember you mentioning it. She was worried about some of the cases that she had investigated. That was unusual for her. Did you talk to John Zaffis? Well, he said that, you know, I should take the necessary precautions, you know. I'll put you on my prayer list. Though yeah. Allison isn't involved in paranormal research, too. she shares her sister's Bye. strong religious faith. My immediate thought was to just continue to pray for her protection. Everything was fine for about six months, and I thought the EVP was just an idle threat. But then, a family crisis arises. My mom had a knee replacement surgery that went awry. Mom. Did you have a good rest? Yes. Everybody's she got fine. systemic staph infection from the surgery. And at one point, the doctors didn't know if she was going to survive or not. He was here earlier. You just get some sleep. And I'll it was one of the most stressful times I'd ever been through in my life. I wasn't on my guard. A few nights later, Mary answers emails from people requesting paranormal investigations. She tells them that there's a medical emergency in her family and she'll contact them later. Consumed with stress, Mary has difficulty maintaining her spiritual defenses. Grunting like a pig. Oh, God, Josh. I was concerned about my son's safety. I wanted him to be protected, but I didn't want him to be frightened because that would 
make him vulnerable. Mary's mother slowly recuperates from her severe infection. She's doing much better. Good. Thank you. You're not getting enough sleep. I am getting enough sleep. Oh, honey, you look terrible. Uh, thanks, Mom. Thanks. I'm changing your bandage. Oh. I'm feeling so much better. Are you all right, ma'am? Um. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm fine. I had a lot of nightmares while I was awake during the day. Let's bring it down one. Mm. How's the tennis game? Pretty slow until I get my shoulder working. We'll get it back for you, okay? All right, now let's check your shoulder and your elbow. We'll go across this way, all right? Okay. Let you go as far as you can. I'm sorry I had to cancel last week. Your God can't help you now. <sighs> What's wrong? You want to think, it's just another bad dream. It's just another nightmare. But I just really wasn't sure. Where, uh, where were we? Uh, I think we were finishing up. We were done? Mm -hmm. next, next week, Thursday, right? <laughs> Believing it to be futile. Mary hesitates to confide in her family. Good, good. Okay. Let's pray. Dear God, it doesn't matter who's around you. They they can't stop it. They can't help you. I felt really, really alone. So how's work going today for you, Mary? Got a uh, old crazy Miss Jenkins up there dancing the tango. Guys, yes. can we not talk about work, please? Maybe I was going crazy. Maybe I had schizophrenia. Maybe it was brought on by stress. And if that's the case, I can get help for that. I can get medication. This is Allison. Mary desperately hopes her sister's knowledge of mental health will provide clarity. I gotta ask you something really important, okay? I just, I've been seeing horrible things and I just, I need to know if you think I might be going crazy. No, she didn't have any of the classic uh, indicators for psychosis. Um, there was no mania, no huh. evidence of schizophrenia, well, none of the typical signs that you'd find for diagnosis. Okay. There's a world of difference between what you're describing and a real mental breakdown. That meant that what was going on in my home was real. It's almost as if you're being diagnosed with cancer in a spiritual way. Just get the house blessed soon. And call Zaffis. Lord God of heaven and earth, bless this house and all who inhabit it. Fill them with the light of Christ. Mary asks her parish priest to bless her home. Their love for God. Her mother now recovered, and Jane joined Mary for support. We ask for Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Um, Father, can you bless my medallions as well, please? Of course. Thank you. Could you bless mine too? Yes, I will. Lord God of heaven and earth, bless these emblems of your saints and bless all who wear them. Fill them with the light of Christ and give them your protection. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
something I couldn't see attacked me. Every emotion inside Mary screams for her to flee. But she knows the house isn't haunted. She is. There was nowhere to go. There was nothing I can do. Mom's doing fine. Uh, she is up and walking, and uh, I even got her to come over for the blessing. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mom. I'm going to bed. Okay, sweetheart, come here. Let me kiss. Love you. Love you, too. Mwah. Oh, Aunt Allison says she loves you, too. You're coming back in, what, two weeks, right? And four days until graduation. Night, Mom. Night. Yeah, um, can I talk to you about something? Sure. Allison, I've started to feel like something is... Something Mary tells her sister about her terrifying attack. Allison, I'm just starting to freak out. Would you just call John's office? <sighs> Calling John would have probably been the smartest thing that my sister could have done. Because he would have actually set some things into motion to try and help her. I don't really feel comfortable calling John. I'm afraid of what he might want to do. It is not going to get any better until you get some help. Mary? How real is your faith? Your faith is nothing! I hung up the phone on her, because I thought, this is ridiculous. That's not my sister. Something was starting to take control of me. I felt completely helpless. Mary again turns to her faith, despite the previous repercussions. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. The necklace was itching and burning. Jeez. It felt like I couldn't breathe. Every time I had anything done to try to make the situation better, I would be attacked. I would be beaten. I felt like God had forsaken me. And when I needed him, God wasn't there. I started to lose my faith. John's office. John. Mary? Mary, is that you? John, I don't know what's happening. I think I might have an attachment. Once that growl sound started, that tells me we were dealing with a demon. We don't need any help. I knew right then and there that this was going to really develop into a very, very serious situation.
and I didn't want to lose Mary. Somebody. Okay, come on in. Oh, uh, no. Mm, I need to stay out here. Sure. What's wrong? Um, I was attacked last night. Did you call the police? Mm -mm. I wasn't attacked by a person. You remember the demonic sound on the tape? Oh, my God. <laughs> <sighs> I'll be there real soon, okay? Uh, I can't stay. Jane was very stay. fearful, oh, and I could I'm sense here. it. Like a shark could sense blood and water. Her fear made her very vulnerable. Extremely afraid. That's when I began wearing my St. Michael's medal and just making sure that I had something blessed in every room. Mommy? Yes? There's a man in the other room. What? There's a man in the other room. Everything's gonna be okay. Mom, what I was Mom. most afraid of was, is this thing going to go after my son? I've been sitting here half the night worried sick about you. I thought that you were in a car wreck or something. I, what? What's that? I, uh, I don't love you, Mike. Oh, come on. You, you don't mean that. Look, look, you've been going through a lot. Let's go inside. You know very little, Mike. Mary! Get out of our life! Get out of here before I call the police and tell them you did this. Things come out of your mouth that you don't want to say. It's as if you're a hostage in your own body and something else is taking control. These entities drove him away. That's exactly what these entities wanted. Me alone, with no help.
what's wrong? We heard some noises. Oh, honey. Like two wolves growling. You know, whatever it is, we can pray about it. I don't believe in prayer. What do you mean? I pray he told to me God. that for years he prayed to God to make me stop doing demonic cases because he was afraid for me. And God never answered his prayers. I don't believe in God either. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Don't say that. And that broke my heart. It just felt like a knife going right through me. I believed in God. I just was very angry at him. Oh, Father, who art in our f Father, who art in heaven. That made it very easy to be taken over. Mary attempts to carry on with everyday life for Josh's sake. Mom, hurry up or we'll be late. He's excited to visit Allison, who's in town for the 4th of July. There was this strange churning inside of me, like a thousand screams waiting to get out. Her mother lives only a few miles away. Mary has no recollection of the perilous drive. Afterwards, he said that I stared at him the whole entire time, and he didn't know how we got there without having an accident. Josh! Oh, God. I need help. Do you need to call someone? No, where does Mom keep her holy water, Allison? at me was not my sister. I kept my distance from her. What was that with mom in there? I was scared. Why do you care about that mother of yours? Go back inside. I need to talk to your mother alone. Why do you even believe in God? What's he ever done for you? He's my protector. I felt totally unequipped. I prayed literally the entire time I was there.
mom go? Don't worry. Just stay here. John's Zaffis. John? Something terrible is happening with Mary. I think she might be possessed. I knew what we were dealing right, with at that point. Tell me exactly what's happening to There was no doubt in my mind whatsoever. All right, Allison, listen. Listen, you gotta keep Josh there with you. All right, don't let him Can you imagine what longer. was going through that poor little guy's mind? It had to be horrifying. Don't let him go near his mother. I wanted to make sure he was okay. All right, in the meantime, I'm gonna start calling some people. I'm gonna start trying to arrange getting Mary some help, okay? When a person oh, is no. in that is a state, you don't know how they're gonna react. You don't know if that person's gonna become violent. You don't know what the capabilities are. Zephyrus pleads with Mary to undergo an exorcism. I'm worried about your son. Don't you want to protect him? Josh? Well, John, of course I love Josh more than anything in the world. That was the one key thing that convinced Mary that she wanted to have the exorcism done. Get out of our life! Something might escalate out of control in her home, and she did not want her son to fall victim to that. Allison and Jane will drive Mary to Connecticut for the exorcism. Mary knows that at best, the exorcism will be extremely painful. At worst, it could be fatal. The closer it got to the exorcism, the more there was second thoughts, there was more fear. I might not make it through this, and who's gonna raise my son? After an eight-hour drive, the women arrive in Stratford, Connecticut. that I was the enemy. The exorcism will be conducted by Father Larry Elward. Having worked with Zephyrus for 25 years, he knows the personal Please. risks. Mary, why don't you take a seat right here? These spirits can attack us, Just want you to relax. but I'm more than willing to do it because they won't be able to find help anywhere else. I'm gonna hold her legs, okay? Allison, I want you to hold her left arm. Jane, I need you to hold her right arm, all right? Exorcism is never a sure thing. You never know if it's gonna be a successful type of situation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. God, the Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, the Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. 
She started reacting very, very violently during the opening prayers. Your God doesn't have the power to win! Serpents are the son and God the Holy Spirit commands you. The holy apostles Peter and Paul. You're dealing with something that you've read about in scriptures, and there it is face to face. Jay, we have a present for you. Don't you want your present? Holy Lord, listen to our call for help and snatch from ruination and from the clutches of the noonday devil. Jay. I compel you, most unclean spirit, every spell of Satan, every The exorcism continues for more than an hour. Her physical coming. strength is terrifying. Your God won't win! Mm. It felt like she could physically have flung me across the room. Jesus Christ of who is led in the desert after his baptism by John to vanquish you and your city. Make way for peace, make way for Christ. For he has already deprived you of your people. Surrender, you beast. Surrender to Christ. This human being made in your image and likeness. And still fear, Lord, into the monster that plunders your vineyard. Jane finds reassurance in her blessed medallions. It's just a reminder that God is with you. It makes me feel stronger. I knew it was saying, come with us, Jane, to hell. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I cast you out, unclean spirit, along with every satanic power of the enemy. I command you, unclean spirits, along with your allies, now besieging this Lamb of God by the coming of our Lord for judgment. The exorcism continues for nearly two hours. Submit them to God, who through David, his faithful servant, banished you, the deceiver, for he now flails you and scourges you with flames. Thirty-three years of being involved with this work, Mary was the first levitation that I was ever witness to. I command you, by the coming of our Lord judgment, that you tell me your name. I command you that you tell me your name. Depart then, O impious one. Depart, accursed one. Depart with all your treachery. He who expels you and who is coming to judge both the quick, the living, and the dead of the world with flames. I felt clean and 
happy like a newborn baby. It felt like I could finally take a deep breath and the air was fresher. It felt like being alive again. It was the best thing in the world to have my sister back again. It was just the most wonderful gift. Everything. After you've been touched by the paranormal, especially on the negative level, these things don't forget who you are. They'll always remember you and they will target you. Mary gives up paranormal research and reconciles with Josh. <laughs> It just brought us closer. I know he's always going to be there for me, just as I always am there for him. I know no matter what happens to me, that everything will be OK. If you can survive demonic possession, I think you can survive just about anything. comes across an abandoned shack in rural Maryland. After we found that building, everything changed. And stumbles upon a portal to an evil world. Hail Satan! For years, a demon threatens to devour him, no! body and soul, until he reaches his breaking point. I was in constant fear. <clears throat> it was controlling me. It wanted me to die. Can he be saved? Or will he be lost forever? In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. In Maryland, far from cities like Annapolis and Baltimore, there are fields and forests where a boy can still explore like frontiersmen of old. Odington was uh, in the middle of nowhere. It was right back in the middle of the woods. In the summer of 2003, 12-year-old John Drenner Jr. ventures into the forest behind his grandmother's home. Cheryl, his 14-year-old sister, leads the way. John, come on, I'm not waiting for you. Keep up. I'm coming. Me and my sister Cheryl were inseparable. My sister, she was always uh, the outgoing one, very outspoken. I was more of the uh, follower. John and I would always go in the woods to play. We would go on nature hunts, look for animals, things like that. We like to explore. But there are certain mysteries better left undisturbed. One day we found um, an old abandoned building. As we walked closer to it, we started getting this weird feeling about it, like we shouldn't be there. I definitely had a, an eerie feeling. Something was just 
telling me don't go near it. It was spooky. John, what are you doing? Get away from there. Come on. This is cool. No way. <sighs> I decided that I was going to be the brave one and venture inside. She was always the one that was making the good choices where <laughs> uh, I really wasn't. In one of the corners, I found a book. It had an upside down cross on it. At first, the book appears harmless, but then it evokes a darkness. Cleanse yourself of malignant and pent up emotions. Hail Satan. Why should I not hate my enemies? Hail Satan! I just started getting this heaviness in my chest and it felt like I couldn't breathe. And it was just this scary feeling. Cheryl! I ended up throwing the book. Wait up! Because it scared me so bad. Wait up! John gets the feeling he's being followed. I just started hearing this incoherent whispering, and I knew it was coming from the woods. John tries to forget about his terrifying experience in the shack. That summer, John spends weekends at his grandmother's house. One night, Cheryl hears disturbing noises coming from John's room. Hey, it's late. I can hear you all the way out in the hall. John, who are you talking to? It sounded like he was speaking in another language. It wasn't English. I couldn't understand him. And when he finally stopped talking, his nose started bleeding. John! John! You OK? Oh my gosh, your nose is bleeding. You OK? What's going on? I don't know. You OK. You'll be fine. You're fine. The next morning, John's mother and stepfather arrived to take him to his home 12 miles away in Pasadena, Maryland. John tries to put the bizarre incidents of the last few days behind him. How was the weekend? It's, it's good. Until his sister brings them up. It would have been better if John hadn't started acting all weird. Jeez, Cheryl. Ever since you went in that creepy building in the woods. I told you kids to stay out of the woods. The woods are said to harbor dark secrets. Local legend has it that satanic rituals took place there. Everyone in the neighborhood said, don't go near the devil's church. Whenever someone used to go by there, either got killed on the nearby train tracks or something horribly bad happened to them. But although John's mother has heard the rumors, she doesn't put much faith in them. They're just rumors, Mom. My opinion of the paranormal was it was about as legitimate as the Easter Bunny. But her son John is about to find out just how true rumors can be. A few nights later, John is at home with his mom and stepdad 
when he suddenly hears something odd. I had heard scratching on the house and in the walls and outside of the house. And then I started hearing banging on the walls. It sounded like somebody was punching the walls right next to me. I just tried to ignore it, and that's when my bed shook. It was a very violent shaking. It felt like an earthquake. But then, from the darkness, It's the summer of 2003 in Odenton, Maryland. Ever since John Drenner Jr. discovered a mysterious book in the woods near his grandmother's home, he can't shake the feeling that an unseen evil lurks in the shadows watching him. There was something happening, something going on. The first time that I heard the whisper in the woods, I knew there was just something off about it. I knew there was something wrong, and it scared me. Hail Satan! Hail, Hail Satan! Cheryl worries about the sudden change she sees in her little brother. He was scared to tell me. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know how I could help. You OK? What's going on? You OK? You'll be fine. But the night comes when John meets the dark force face to face. He was about seven to eight feet tall, black and shaped like a person. I saw something. What, what, what did you see? What? It's, it's gone. OK. What was it? It, it looked like a man. Okay. John told me that he heard scratching noises, like someone was trying to get into the room. He what? complained of seeing shadows, of seeing the monster. OK, John, there isn't a man. It was probably a light from a passing car, OK? I just thought it, he was scared, maybe heard a noise. It was his imagination. Do you want me to stay with you for a bit? Yeah? She told me that I was just having a nightmare, that I needed to go back to bed. My mother really wasn't the religious type. She looked at everything from an analytical aspect, science. If she couldn't see it, feel it, taste it, touch it, it wasn't real. Night after night, the same creature pays John a visit. I started sleeping with the blanket over my head so I couldn't see it. John's mother decides to bring him to a child psychologist. After so many nights, I contacted an institute that would diagnose and treat John for whatever was ailing him. My mom always thought that there was something psychological going on with John. John was diagnosed first with having night terrors. And they gave him medication, but said eventually he would grow out of it. I knew that what was happening to me was real. It wasn't something that was in my mind. Things appear to calm down for a while. 
until one weekend when they are back at their grandmother's house, Cheryl finds John acting strangely. I was in the kitchen eating breakfast one morning. No. No. And I heard John no, I in the living room talking to someone, so I wandered in there to see who he was talking to. No. No, I, I can't. I don't want to do that. I won't. John. Who are you talking to? You're not supposed to be here. And he was sitting in the corner, just talking to the corner. He says, you're not supposed to be here. He was awake. He was like he was having a conversation with whoever he was talking to. Grandma, something's wrong with John. John, are you OK? But John is not OK as he finally emerges from his trance. It's bleeding. Just like before. I was terrified for him. John, what's going on with you? I don't know what's happening to me. It won't leave me alone. I had talked to my grandmother and told her about everything that was happening. I said, this man, he's tormenting me. She hugged me and said, I'm going to take care of this for you. A few days later, John's grandmother decides to take action. She places religious articles in John's room at her house, hoping they'll protect him. Our grandmother was religious. She would read us the Bible. She believed John. She thought that there was something spiritual going on. I was very hopeful that, you know, that would at least stop it. That would create a safe zone for me. I don't think it helped. The crucifix at his grandmother's house only seems to be making things worse. The very next night, this entity was there. Using the crucifixes was just making it mad. It wasn't doing anything to protect me. few nights later, when he's back home with his mom and stepdad, John senses the evil force is back. That night, I just laid down to close my eyes, and I heard a knock in the corner of my room. It was the shadow entity. I was paralyzed with fear. When he was just a boy, John Drenner Jr. unwittingly uncovered an evil force in an abandoned shack, rumored to be the site of satanic gatherings. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Since then, a malevolent entity has followed him, cornering him in his bedroom at home in Pasadena, Maryland. At this point, I am terrified. I am absolutely terrified of not knowing what is going to happen next. Night after night, the dark figure torments John in his bedroom, the one place where he should feel safe. And as time wears on, the entity grows bolder and more grotesque. I couldn't move, I couldn't scream. I could just look at it, its emptiness in its eyes. It's just absolute evil. No! 
John has run to his mom and stepdad for help many times, even though they believe he is just suffering from night terrors. But that night, John's cries go unanswered. I started banging on my parents' door to wake up and help me. This thing was going to hurt me. I felt like it was going to kill me. And I'm banging on the door for about five minutes and nothing. Open the door! Honey, I'm gonna go downstairs. Can I get you anything? No, I'm okay. Okay. Hey, buddy. Shouldn't you be in bed? Why wouldn't you open the door? I've been pounding and screaming to get you to wake up. But they weren't ignoring him. They never even heard him. Buddy, we've been awake the whole time, and we never heard anything. You never made a sound. I didn't know what to think. That honestly scared me even worse. Come on, let's go back to bed. It's all right. The only thing I could do was comfort him. At that point, after all the other steps I had taken, the only thing I could do was to be there for my son. I was looking for a logical reason for everything and a logical way to fix things, but there was nothing that I could do to stop the occurrences that were happening. Frustrated that his mother and stepfather don't believe him, John pulls away from his family. He started shutting everyone out. He shut me out. He shut our grandmother out. He was angry. I was completely alone in this. Nobody could understand or believe what they couldn't see or feel for themselves. And it was a complete and total nightmare for me. John finds solace in the company of friends who take his fears seriously. One night, they play with fire when they attempt to contact the evil entity to help rid John of his tormentor. Aren't you supposed to ask it something? Oh, yeah. I decided to tell one of my friends about what was going on. Is there anybody here with us? He had said, well, I have a spirit board. We can use it and find out what it wants, and then it'll leave you alone. It's not working. Why are you messing with John? I had no idea what it was or how it worked or anything like that, because I had never really messed with him before. It's not working. Guess not. I'll be right back. Here, let me try. My one friend got up to use the bathroom. What happened? Something grabbed my leg in there. He said, I felt something touch my leg. Let's go. Roger. Wait, don't go. John now knows for certain that the evil entity is not just in his imagination. It was a massive turning point in my life when my friends had experienced something. It was like this sense of relief. Somebody else has seen it as well. But at the same time, John has no idea that he has just invited evil deeper into his life. And things are about to get a lot worse. That's weird. I felt this heaviness in my chest again. I knew it was around. Who are you? We are Legion. As 
said, we are legion, and we will never leave. We? No! For more haunting, visit DestinationAmerica.com. For the past few years, John Drenner Jr. has been battling a malevolent, demonic force hell-bent on taking over his body and his soul. It all started after he unknowingly encountered the entity in an abandoned shack in the Maryland woods. Indulgence instead of absence. Rumored to be the site Hail of Satan. satanic worship. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! One night, after using a spirit board, John has a close encounter with his tormentor. Who are you? We are Legion. We? It was just this deep, grovelly, bass-type voice. It just literally radiated through your whole body. Then the sinister force attacks. And I could feel its breath on my face. It was trying to choke me to death. I felt like it was going to kill me. But no one comes to his aid. John manages to escape the clutches of the evil entity, but knows it's only a matter of time before it strikes again. With family and friends unable to help him in his fight, John conducts research to try to understand what he's up against. It was attacking me. And at this point, I was really in fear for my life. Nobody believed me when I told them. They just thought I was crazy. Suddenly, John comes across an image of an upside-down cross nearly identical to the one he saw on the book in the woods. It's a symbol often used by devil worshippers. Hail Satan! Why should I not hate my enemies? Hail Satan! Hail Satan! It all begins to make sense. Somehow, a demonic entity attached itself to John in the shack that day. And now it won't let him go. I think the entity was trying to push me to the point where I would kill myself. It wanted me to die so it could collect my soul. And John has no idea how to rid himself of it. Since he was a boy, John Drenner Jr. has been battling a demonic force. Now 19 years old, he is living on his own in Glen Burnie, Maryland, not far from his family home. Frightening visions and voices plague him nightly with no end in sight. I had tried to kill myself a few times. I was tired of dealing with this, and I was tired of fighting this by myself. John has found himself increasingly isolated from those he loves, his mother. I did try to figure out what was wrong with John. It was so extremely frustrating. You can't stop something that you can't see, that you can't hear, that you can't feel. You need something tangible. And his sister. It was very frustrating to be shut out of his life. I got married and moved farther away. I just kind of wrote it off as he'll talk to me when he's ready. That summer, a ray of sunshine pierces through John's dreary existence. Her name is Mary Segura. I can't believe I'm really here. 
I know, neither can I. I met John when me and my sister decided to go to the mall. John and his friend was upstairs, and he kind of looked down at me, and I kind of looked down on him. He had those beautiful eyes, those green eyes. After dating a year, they've made the decision to live together. Is that it, the last box? <sighs> last one. We had that instant connection. I just knew. All this time, John has managed to keep his dark secret from his girlfriend. But their blissful life together is about to take a tragic turn. I didn't tell Mary what was happening to me because I didn't want her to think that I was a whack job. And I didn't want her to just leave me. John has no idea that the demon is no longer just after him. It now seeks to intimidate his girlfriend. A few weeks after moving in, Mary begins to feel a presence other than John in their home. I felt like someone was watching me, but I knew that nobody was home. It's the worst feeling you can ever possibly have. When he was a boy, John Drenner Jr. uncovered an evil entity in the woods of Maryland. Since the moment the demon attached itself to him, it has tormented John relentlessly. At this point in my life, at 19 years old, I just assumed that I was going to, just going to have to deal with this for the rest of my life. It was a sense of hopelessness, and it made things a lot harder for me knowing that I wasn't ever going to be freed from this. I was just going to spend the rest of my life in hell. John's been dating his girlfriend, Mary, for the past year. But until she moves in with him, she has no idea he's being pursued by a demon. One day, Mary senses its presence. It's the worst feeling knowing that something is not behind you, but you can feel it. You can feel something breathing, looking at you. But when you turn back, nothing's there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You scared me. I'm sorry. Oh, I've been having this creepy feeling all day. Creepy. Yeah. It's nothing. <sighs> he just said, oh, it's just a weird feeling. It's just probably my imagination. I'm getting used to having someone else live with me. I had the feeling that she knew something was going on, but she didn't know what. For the next few days, John continues to hide the truth from Mary until she begins to sense a change in him. Throughout the days, he would be sweet and loving. Then all of a sudden, you say one thing, and he snapped. It was aggressive. Hey, did you mail the rent check? I will. OK, when? I will. I'm trying to read. I just don't want to have to pay a late fee, and then there's, like, charges. I said I will. What's wrong with your eyes? What do you mean? The eyes were black, frightening. It wasn't my John. Something else was taking over his body and his soul. <laughs> Mary, why don't you come out, Mary?
Mary. John. Wait, come here. Oh, come John. Here. Oh, John. Oh, oh my God, your eyes, they're so terrible. There's something I need to tell you. It's okay. He started to tell me everything about his life and dealing with this demonic thing. Ever since I was a kid, it's tortured me and it's followed me. I thought it was over. I thought it was gone. And the last thing that I wanted was for anything to happen to you. I'm sorry. I didn't know what to think. Either A, he's crazy, or B, he really needs help. That's a lot to take in. And for a minute there, he kind of had me in shock. I was sure that she was going to leave me. OK. OK, hon, we'll work on this together. Mary convinces John he needs help from a higher power. I figured, well, let's try to go to some churches to see if they can help. None of it was working. All the ones that we went to, either they turned us down or they just didn't want to deal with it. One night, John has a disturbing dream an omen of more bad things to come. Mary? 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 When I looked up, I had seen that the sky was blood red. There were these black things flying around in a circle. In the middle of the sky was this red sun, what looked like a swirling portal. It was frustrating. I couldn't do anything to help the love of my life. And I suffered every time he had a nightmare, every time he had a vision, I suffered. Because that was me feeling hopeless. But John's nightmares are not the only thing Mary will suffer. The demon is not finished with her yet. The next night, while John is working a night shift, Mary finds herself alone. It was pitch dark. Turned on my cell phone. It was full battery. No way that it could just die. No, no, come on, come on, come on, come on. For years, John Drenner Jr. has been plagued by an unrelenting demon that seeks to possess him. And now it seeks to scare off his girlfriend. It was pitch dark. Turned on my cell phone. It was full battery. Turned on the light so I can see. And all of a sudden, battery drained. And my heart started racing. The figure was face to face to me. I was terrified. I didn't know what to do, but just stand there and shake. I've never experienced 
anything like this before. Anything. And just as suddenly, the demon disappears. John now knows the entity will stop at nothing to destroy him and isolate him from the people who care about him. <laughs> this shadow entity was gaining power and it wanted complete and total control. In February of 2012, a friend puts John in touch with Bill Bean, an ordained deliverance minister, similar to an exorcist, but not affiliated with the Catholic Church. John said, I think I found our solution. At this point, I was willing to try anything to make this end. Please help us. I will. Come closer. When John came to meet with me, I immediately sensed the presence of evil that was upon him. I could see the demon that was behind his eyes, absolutely could see it. Bill believes John first came into contact with the demon in childhood, and now, years later, it's on the verge of taking possession of him. Son, I believe a demon attached to you when you were a child. I felt that John was strongly demonically oppressed or possibly even possessed. Demonic oppression is the beginning stages of possession. The person becomes introverted, withdrawn from family members and friends. They start to have a negative outlook on everything. John, you need a prayer of deliverance. Now. A deliverance is similar to an exorcism. In John's case, it was severe. Steps had to be taken right then and there. And something in me kept telling me, don't do it. But with nowhere else to turn, John wills himself to go through with it. Amen. <laughs> I forced myself to take his hand. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. <sighs> He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Suddenly, the evil John encountered so long ago lashes out. Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. Hail Satan. He restoreth my soul. Satan represents undefiled wisdom instead of hypocritical self-deceit. I take power and authority over this demonic spirit in the name of God. I cast you out, spirit. I said, do you renounce Satan and all of his works? Yes, I do. I cast you out, spirit. Cast you out! I remember just coming to, looking him in the eye, and it felt like the weight of the world was lifted off of me. Is it over? Is it really over? It was the most amazing feeling that I have ever felt in my life. I think it is. At that moment, I got my John back. John today is loving, sweet. I definitely feel that the situation made him a stronger, more outgoing person. <laughs> you love you it. You know that I do. You love it. Eventually, John reestablishes ties with his sister and mother. Whatever. 
When my brother came back into my life, he was happy again, and we're working and growing our relationship every day. John's mother, a paranormal skeptic, is still devoted to science and logic. He's like, Mom, can you explain what happened to me? I can't explain. And I said, it doesn't matter. I found my solace and comfort knowing that my son was finally free and happy. Thank you. John now works as Bill Bean's apprentice, helping other people overcome demonic oppression. This is risky work, but John believes it is his calling. I had a dream one night that I was helping people. And I said, you know what? I need to face my fears. I know what it's like to be in hell. I know what it's like to be tormented for years. It was time for me to help pull other people from the darkness.